welcome back to Hero Review, episode 4. Today we are looking at Sonic the Hedgehog from the 2020 film, wow that sounds weird to say, Sonic the Hedgehog. Shout out to Lucky Joe and Nazish Ashad for suggesting Sonic. I'm not sure if they wanted the film version of Sonic, but I already reviewed the film version of Robotnik, so it kind of just comes full circle, you know? How good of a hero is our boy John Ralphio? Let's find the heck out. Turns out with great power comes great power hungry bad guys. And I led them right to us. Born onto a distant planet, the little speed demon Sonic happily lived with his guardian Longclaw the Owl. Having immense power and the ability to run as fast as Evan Peters, Sonic eventually became the target of some naughty knuckle looking boys who wanted to harness that power. Running from the furry feds, the owl eventually gave Sonic a bag of rings and sent him away through a portal to Earth. From here, Sonic would live by himself in isolation, forming a lot of loneliness, you know, like his name was Akon. Over the years, this loneliness culminated in this just this big explosion because he was running really fast that notified the US government of his existence. Losing his rings thanks to the Donut Lord and an evil Jim Carrey now chasing him, it's up to Sonic and Cyclops to reach San Francisco and recover the rings. Okay, my first question, why not just run to San Francisco? In the movie, they give this explanation of Sonic not knowing where it is, but dude, just run up the coast. You'll find it eventually. Besides the holes in, you know, the whole point of the movie, I actually think they do some interesting things here with Sonic as a character. The fact that the biggest thing Sonic deals with is loneliness, it's actually pretty interesting and it makes him a lot more real as a character. The fact that he seems to be physically perfect, I like how the struggle is more of a mental and subconscious thing. It makes him seem real without compromising his just awesome speed and comedic timing. Sonic is actually a really good character in this movie, and personally, it's probably the most interesting he's ever been. Granted, I've never read the comics, and I haven't played, like, the extended games with the real big narratives, but I've played some of the games, and he's always seemed a little bit stale to me. Luckily, Ben Schwartz brings a comedic charm to him, which makes him way more awesome to watch and listen to. Sonic has a childlike innocence to him, and he's never really experienced a lot of the world, so it's cool to see him do that in this film. As I said, I think the motive they give him is actually pretty good, and it makes him so much more of an interesting character. In the games, he's a bit one note, um, kind of like, kind of like the intro to Runaway, but in this movie, he's as interesting as the Kanye West song Runaway. I like the fact that although he has this incredible power, he's by no means perfect and actually makes a lot of mistakes. In a film starring Jim Carrey as the villain, there was definitely a chance Sonic would seem dull because of Jim Carrey. Jim Carrey, he, he's just so awesome. He always has this energy to him. I could have seen Sonic kind of fall into the background and come across kind of boring. But luckily that doesn't really happen in this movie and he, he kind of holds his own and I respect that. Sonic is a fairly cocky character but it feels natural and he's actually forced to put his money where his mouth is at the end of this film. I think he's a pretty solid character and he works well with everyone else in this movie and I'm just happy we never got that cannibalistic looking Sonic cosplay thing they first teased. Honestly as much as I like him I'm not sure I could have gotten past that. That would have been just, uh, that was weird and creepy. And let's just, uh, let's just uh, move on. Yeah. So there's one scene we have to talk about because it's kind of complicated. The scene of reference, of course, being the Quicksilver scene. Don't get me wrong. It's an awesome scene, and I think it does a tremendous job of showing just how fast Sonic is. But if you don't acknowledge the fact that this is a Quicksilver scene ripoff, you gotta like get your ears checked or something. So while it's an awesome scene, it doesn't feel as special as it could have because we've seen Peter Peters do it like all before. Luckily, there are some other cool scenes though that I think are also pretty enjoyable. I think watching Sonic go up against Robotnik the first time, you know, the first time in pretty much just all the time. It's really interesting, but the first time in particular. It's a really just enjoyable scene because Sonic's awesome and Jim Carrey's awesome, and it also does a good job of showing just how fast and powerful he is. The other scene though that stands out to me is when he's playing baseball by himself. Ah, oh, 
I like this scene because it's the most honest we see Sonic in the movie, and we see just how much he's struggling with this loneliness. I never thought I'd say that sentence, guys, where I'm like, Sonic's struggling with loneliness. It is a crazy world we live in. It's a struggle we've all been through, and the lashing out just makes it all the more relatable. What's not relatable, though, is being able to travel across a whole island in two seconds, but you still can't find San Francisco. Guys, come on. As far as how heroic Sonic is, it's easy to see that he exhibits a lot of the traits you'd expect to see in a protagonist. He's caring, loyal, a good old fashioned buddy old pal, and he does good with the power he has. While Sonic isn't on a big mission to save the world, we see the kind of person, um, hedgehog, that he is early on in the movie. When stumbling across this turtle on the floor about to get run over, Sonic saves the turtle and then takes it for this run at a speed it probably can't even comprehend. Is it the best thing for the turtle to make it go crazy like this? Probably not. You can see the PTSD Sonic has done. By no means should you grab a turtle and start running around with it. Squirrels, however, those guys are crazy. Go nuts. Sonic does this because in his mind, he's making the turtles day. He just wants to use his powers for good. It's an ideology he carries all throughout the movie, and the fact that he hasn't pulled an A train yet, it makes him all the more respectable. I got it, I got it, I got it. I don't got it. Sonic's origin is interesting, and the only thing I don't like about his journey is that it shouldn't have ever happened in the first place. Come on, donde esta el mapa, Sonic? As a character, though, he's the most interesting he's ever been, and while he does rip off Quicksilver, it's still a cool scene, and he has a lot of other cool ones. Finally, he's a real swell fellow, and he's overall just a pretty good protagonist. I'm gonna give Sonic a 7, we'll call it 7.5. Here we go, room to open it up. Thank you again for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, then maybe consider helping a homie hit 2,000 subscribers. I know I'm still like 900 away or so, but with your help, we can be 899 away. I make character reviews on the weekly, and you don't want to miss any of them. Let me know who I should review next. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you next time. I can't lose him!